Good evening, everybody. It's good to be here. Um, hope you're excited. It's Wednesday, so middle of the week. Got to get over that hump. <laughs> so uh, it's great to be here and be able to speak to you tonight. Um, so today's uh, lesson is coming from Acts chapter 11. And so we're going to be looking at the growth of the early church, despite persecution that was going on. And we'll be looking specifically at verses 19 through 30. Um, so please turn there for reference. Whoops, let me go back one. All right, so um, the setting of this scene here in Acts 11 is roughly five to 10 years after the stoning and murder of Stephen in Acts chapter seven. And the author, Luke, makes reference to this in verses 19 through 21, which says, now those who had been scattered by the persecution that broke out when Stephen was killed traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, spreading the word only among Jews. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. So Stephen's death is an important reference here because while Satan was trying to use persecution to discourage the spreading of the gospel, the good news, God used the persecution as a springboard for church growth, the complete opposite of what the evil one was planning. Not only did it result in church growth, but for the first time, we see a great number of both Jews and Greeks, aka Gentiles, believing, being baptized, and turning to the Lord. This is a historic and exciting moment for the Lord's church. And when you're doing the work of the Lord, it will be completely evident because God's hand will be with you. You will see amazing things happening. And this is why we can't let persecution strike fear in us or bring us down. God is going to flip the script and do amazing things when you least expect him to. Stephen's death was you know, it was probably extremely difficult to deal with, uh, but it was necessary in order for the church to spread and grow beyond the walls of Jerusalem. Tertullian, who was an ancient theologian, he said it perfectly when he said, the blood of martyrs is the seed of the church. This news of this first mixed church of both Jews and Gentiles was so exciting that it traveled 300 miles back to Jerusalem. Now, 300 miles in a car sounds like a long, long way away, but can you imagine 300 miles on an animal or by foot? Uh, but this just shows you how exciting this news really was that the first mixed church was established in Antioch. People were willing to travel for days to deliver this news. And so the news reaches Jerusalem and Barnabas, son of encouragement, is sent to Antioch Again, traveling 300 plus miles. And in verse 23, we see that Barnabas lives up to his name and encourages the newly formed church there by telling them to remain true to the Lord with all your hearts. He also has a hand in growing the church and the number of disciples as it alludes to in verse 24. And it's amazing how far we've come as a civilization where all we have to do today is turn on a TV or look at our phones to see or hear the news and news that is from the opposite side of the world is literally delivered in seconds i remember many years ago um, i was mentoring a young man named stephen cambaris which many of you remember and steve had decided to do some mission work after his college years and spent a year or two in china uh, where he was teaching english to students by using the bible but this was a covert operation because if it was discovered that he and his teammates were using the Bible to teach, bad things would happen to them, including being imprisoned. But I remember thinking to myself how cool it was to hear from him via email while he was all the way in China, the opposite side of the world. Every time he would share good news through email, he would have to use these like code words to disguise the work that they were doing um, because maybe you know or don't know that China scans and censors every email that leaves their networks. Why? Well, because that's what communist countries do. 
They sensor and scan everything that goes in and out of the country. But imagine if Steve could only share that good news of his work being done by flying home to New York from China. It would have taken months for us to get updates on his great work. And that is the benefit of technology today and how convenient it is to share such news. But it's so unfortunate that so many people use this convenience as a means to spread bad or negative news. Studies have linked the consumption of bad news to increase the stress, anxiety, and depression. So let us be people that are eager to share exciting and encouraging news with one another. As it says in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 11, let us encourage one another and build each other up. Now the news about the growth of this mixed church in Antioch could not be held back. So much so that Barnabas had to tell Saul, who was all the way in Tarsus, a hundred plus miles away. And we see an important role and example being laid out here in verse 26. There were many new converts and a new dynamic of both Jews and Gentiles worshiping together. Paul and Barnabas felt compelled to stay with them for an entire year, growing the church in knowledge and wisdom. What a great example of Matthew 28, verse 20, where Jesus says to teach them everything I have commanded you. At the end of verse 26 is a sentence we, quite, we quote quite often. Uh, the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. And back then, this was not really a proud moment uh, for the Christians because the term was actually meant to be derogatory. It wasn't the disciples who named themselves Christians. The Bible says that they were called Christians. So it was a word that pagans used to mock the believers. Even today, right, you know, many will use the word Christian in a derogatory way. So, you know, let us not be ever ashamed to bear the name Christ, or rather let us be proud and show the world that God, God's love, show, show what God's love is capable of doing, because God's love is powerful. Last slide here we'll go through, um, and then we'll jump into our groups. So in verse 27, we read about some prophets who are also coming down to Antioch, most likely because of this great news, right, about the church growth that was going on there. And Agabus stood up amongst the crowd and prophesied about a famine that was going to hit the Roman world. So how did these new converts respond to this prophecy? Well, they said to one another, wow, I can't believe there's this famine going on over there. Good thing we won't be impacted. Let's, let's keep them in prayer. No, that's not what they said or what they did, right? They took action. They got together and they decided to give out of the generosity of their hearts. As it says in verses 29 through 30, the disciples, as each one was able, decided to provide help for the brothers and sisters living in Judea. This they did sending their gift to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. And from this example, you know, we can see four principles of generosity being shown here, as you see listed. They gave willingly and deliberately, right? So when they heard that there was a need, they didn't hesitate. They sprung into action and did something about it. They gave as they were able to. So whether it was the equivalent of a dollar or thousands of dollars, every disciple chipped in and gave because there was a need. They gave with purpose. There was a need and they filled it by giving. They were the answer to prayer, right? They didn't just sit back and say, Lord, please help these people that are about to go through a famine. They answered the prayer and came to the calling. And lastly, they gave wisely. They entrusted their gifts with leaders, Barnabas and Saul, who then gave it to the elders to distribute where the need was. Such a great example of a young church really living out uh, the mission work that God had called them to. And in this particular case, giving to their brethren that were far off and in need. And we can learn so much from these young disciples, right? And, you know, giving doesn't always have to be monetary or financial. Giving someone your time or, helping, or a helping hand is one of the greatest gifts you can give to a brother or a sister. So let us find ways to give generously to God's people. Amen? And I hope you enjoy your discussions and God bless you.